up everybody? So we're out in the shop and we are starting a new build series. On this one, we are working with 5160. This is that leaf spring material that I've used on a few different videos. This is one of the billets that we took and we flattened out and textured. You can see all that up there. Now, the knife design we're going to be doing is this one right here. It's a nice Warncliffe style design. I've wanted to make this knife for a long time. It was this design right here is what it's based on. That is the uh, like either fourth or fifth knife that I ever drew out and then put on template material. Uh, it is one of those first knives whenever I first started hanging them up here on the wall. It was one of the first ones. you know. And whenever I first started making knives and I really was getting into this, I was making a lot of different Warncliffe style blades. The ones that are all up top here. Uh, from right here to here <laughs> those are all the fangs and different versions of that and this is the evolution of that knife so this has a little bit different handle than I would have done back then plus the blade is a little bit shaped different and this is something that like I said I've, I've wanted to do for a, a long time and it's about time that I go ahead and pull the trigger on it and do it now we're gonna be working with Again, 5160 plus some absolutely beautiful burl wood right here. This is going to be amazing on this knife. I cannot wait to use this. So we're going to be doing this. We're going to cut it down into scale material. Plus we're going to be doing some black liners, some black pins. It is just going to be an absolute sweet looking knife when it's all said and done. So I'm excited about this. This is going to be a cool build series. and. What better way to start off 2021 than with one of the first knives that I've ever designed. So let's jump into this. Let's get this series started. Let's get it. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and start by cutting off all the excess. I do have a lot of people who ask me about bandsaw blades and I use a 14 tooth per inch Linux quarter bandsaw blade to do all of this. I will say you can easily do this with a cutoff wheel on an angle grinder but these blades are actually pretty inexpensive. I get them in packages of three for about $19 and they last for about five or six knives cutting them out and if you're not cutting steel you can cut a lot of wood with them but this right here is one of my favorite ways to cut out steel. It just works so fast and it's so easy to control. And this is just a Harbor Freight Porter Band Saw that is attached to a swag off road Porter Band Saw table. So, definitely nice, easy thing to use to cut out pretty much anything you need to cut out. Now we're just going to go ahead and hop on to the 2x72 with a used 36 grit belt. Now we're just going to refine the profile from what we had from cutting it out with the porter band saw. And then one of the things that I always say, just put it in your hand pretty often because you might need to modify the profile just a little bit because of how it feels in the hand and because I modified the shape of the handle versus my template I definitely had to make sure that this was still comfortable in the hand and one of the things that I like to do is I like to go through and actually make all of the grind lines run parallel to the blade itself. Typically whenever I go and I refine that profile, all the lines start running perpendicular to the blade and this just starts to make everything a little bit easier to sand out. 
Now on the oscillating spindle sander we're using an 80 grit drum and we're just getting into some of the tighter areas that you can't get into with a 2x72. And this also puts a little bit better finish on the outside of the blade and gets rid of some of the grinding lines from the 36 grit belt. And while I'm filling it right here, I feel like the finger choil needs to shift just a little bit because I'm getting a little bit of a hot spot on my middle finger. And so I have to go back and reshape it just a little bit. And it comes out feeling a little bit better and more comfortable. And this is where I say put it in your hand and check it multiple times so you make sure it's a comfortable knife. Now we're going to be drilling our holes with a 3 16th drill bit. Um, these two first holes were the ones that are going to be used for the pins. All the rest of the holes are purely just to lighten the tang so that the knife has a better balance. We're going to go ahead and chamfer the holes because this gets rid of the burrs that are made from drilling through. Now I did go back and drill a few more holes later in the, the build process here for extra weight saving, but I did that after I ground the bevels. And what you saw right there was me just marking the edge so that I can scribe it with this set of calipers right here. And this is going to give me a center line to be able to grind to for my cutting edge. So what I'm going to go ahead and do is put on my plunge line jig. If you want to check this video out, I have one based on making this plunge line jig. And I'll go ahead and leave a link for that in the description below. So you can go check that out if you want to make one of these. It is very easy to make and is very helpful. If you want to be able to freehand grind your bevels, this makes it a lot easier to be able to control your plunge line. Now we're going to go ahead and just cut a 45 degree angle all the way to the cutting edge with a used 36 grit belt. You don't want to do this with a new one because you'll just mess up your belt. Now we're going to use a new belt and what I do is I break that edge so where the 45 degree angle meets the flats I go ahead and grind that and put another angle on it and then I take that bevel and I bring that up the side and the point behind that is so that I can actually turn that into the bevel so I'm just gonna keep grinding on that until that area meets both the edge and the height that I want the bevel. So what I'm doing here is I'm just slowly putting a little bit more and more pressure towards the spine to bring that bevel up as high as I want. And then of course we want to stop at a certain point because we are going to have to grind into this again after we heat treat to get through the decarb layer and get our bevels nice and clean for the finish work that we want to do. So you're not going to go all the way up to where you would end at. You want to stop and leave some meat on the bone for later processes. And we're just going to use a medium scotch Brite belt to just smooth out some of the rough edges I like to do this before heat treating to just get a nice finish on the knife so that the rest of the steps that we're going to do 
a lot easier and it knocks down any sharp edges that might become stress points. And stress points become cracks in the heat treat so you want to definitely knock any of those off or smooth those out. Alright guys, so let's go ahead and wrap up this video. Now, before I show you the blade, I want to remind y'all, I've got a, uh, a friend, a local friend, who just started a, a YouTube channel and has a really cool Facebook page. His name is Chad Kennedy. You should go check out his stuff. Uh, y'all should definitely go check out his Facebook page because he has a bunch of just beautiful Damascus stuff that he works on. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and pop some of it up on the screen now. That stuff right there, this is like his top nine things that he's done for 2020. Beautiful stuff. Y'all, go check out his stuff. Uh, I'm going to leave like a, a link for the Facebook page and his YouTube channel that he just started kind of focusing on. And y'all should go check that stuff out. Guys, look at this. How cool is that? I really like this profile. I think that it is interesting. I think that it is everything that I wanted it to be because it's everything that that right there, that design was, and then some. With the way that we do our handles now, and I mean, I just love this profile. I think that this is going to be an amazing knife. Definitely very stabby. That bad boy comes to a nice point. So, this is going to be awesome. Now, what I plan on doing in next video is heat treating, tempering, doing the maker's mark on this, and then figuring out the finish that we're going to put on it. So, my goal is to do... So, you see how it's got this 36 grit finish right now? My goal, okay, <laughs> goal, is to acid etch this whole entire thing and get it super dark and then take th 1000 grit on a very hard backer, probably a steel backer, and just go over all the little high points. So all these little lines that you see right here. Now we're going to have to make this a really uniform, you know, grind, but go over those lines and kind of knock off the uh, acid etch on just the high points and give it not so much a stone wash finish but actually make the 36 grit lines stand out so that we have that going through the blade here then we're going to have our texture that we forged in all through here and then we're going to have a beautiful nice shiny crisp edge running down it and I think that it's just going to be really cool. I think it's going to be something that is unique and just screams badassery. So that is the goal. And hopefully that's what happens. So the next video is all focused on heat treat. Actually showing y'all a little bit more in-depth version of my heat treat of 5160. So we're going to do a couple of test pieces. We're going to heat treat them at three different temperatures. So y'all can see what I do whenever I'm trying to figure out my temperature and what it looks like color wise before I heat treat. We're going to do like three different test pieces. We're going to snap them so that y'all can see the grain structure on them. Then we're going to heat treat this, temper it, maker's mark, acid etch, finish, all that stuff all in that video. So be looking forward to that. Guys, if y'all would, give this video a thumbs up, share this video or one of my other videos. And if you haven't yet, subscribe to the channel. Turn on the notification bell so you get notified of all the stuff that we have coming up this year. For one, finishing this knife. For two, doing this Go My build right here. Okay, this is one of the ones that's got the 5160 on the cutting edge. So it's going to have that nice shiny edge. We got that coming up. We got a bunch of stuff coming up. Guys, I want y'all to have an amazing year this year. I want y'all to stay safe. And you know what? I'll see y'all next time.